Ava, you ready? Yes. Yes, you are. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit didst instruct the hearts of thy faithful, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's the beginning of the work week. It's Monday, March 8, 2021. And the gospel of today's Mass comes from St. Luke, chapter 4, verses 24 to 30. Okay, let's, let's read this gospel. Jesus said to the people in the synagogue at Nazareth, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is, a, is accepted in his own native place. It's a very popular saying that, uh, you know, our Lord himself uttered um, to the Jews, okay? No prophet. In fact, the old way of formulating this is no prophet is without honor except in his own country, okay? Meaning, uh, prophets are normally regarded well and highly except in the place where they came from, okay? Now, prophet here can mean many things. It, uh, of course, historically, our Lord is talking about the prophets that he has sent to the Jewish people in order to reveal uh, things about God and to prepare for his coming. And many of these prophets were rejected by the Jews. Okay? Killed, in fact, and disposed of in very bad ways. Right. <clears throat> so, and our Lord himself was rejected by his own people when he uh, already came out. You remember in the synagogue, that scene in the synagogue where he had read the prophecy of Isaiah and he pointed to himself and said, well, this is being fulfilled in your hearing today. What did the people do? They couldn't take it. They, they were going to throw him uh, off the brow of the hill. Well, actually, that's also part of this. <laughs> Gospel reading. But that's just the introduction I wanted you to understand. Okay, so no prophet is accepted in his own native place. That is, I guess, part of human nature that we tend to reject the people who are supposed to bring us good news, the people who are supposed to bring us, um, you know, closer to God. The people who are supposed to guide us. The people God has put beside us in order to guide us in our ways towards heaven. We tend to reject them. We tend to reject them. Just the same way that these people rejected many of the prophets God had sent them. So let's read through. Indeed, I tell you, and here are some examples. There were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah. When the sky was closed for three and a half years and a severe famine spread over the entire land, well, what happened? It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha, the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, so Jesus was apparently talking to the Jews in the synagogue, they were filled with fury. Okay? Fury. They were violent. They were mad. Right? They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their own town had been built to hurl him down headlong, but he passed through their midst and went away. So he was able to escape them. But could you imagine this ungrateful people? Eh? Jesus was just giving them an example of the rejection that they themselves have made of the prophets. 
because they were also rejecting him. Right? And he was already explaining to them that, look, the more you reject the prophets, the people that I have put before you to guide you, well, the more disadvantageous it becomes to you. Right? If you just keep rejecting all the good people, the good uh, instruments I have used in the past, and I'm still using now, okay? because we continue to be sent these so-called prophets or guides or spiritual guides for our souls, there are always people like that that God puts before us. Number one of whom are your... Very good, Mia. Your own parents. Your own parents are the modern day prophets to you. Your own pastors. Your own uh, 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 whoever whoever it is that you are uh, that you have confidence in to tell the stories of your lives. These are people that God is putting right beside you to guide you in life. But what have many of us? What have many of us chosen to do? Right? Many of us have chosen to reject these people, beginning from children who disobey their parents. Right? Beginning from children who keep rebelling against what their parents tell them. They forget that, you know, their parents were put beside them there to help them grow not only grow in the faith and understand the faith, but grow in understanding life in general. Right? But we many times choose to reject what, what we are told and how our parents are guiding our lives. We are behaving like these Jews who have been favored. They're the chosen people, the children of God. God was caring for them. All throughout their history. Eh? Sending them these prophets to guide them. To help them wait for the Messiah. The trouble is even when the Messiah appeared already. They still rejected him. Eh? They still rejected him. And all of this is rooted in pride. 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 They were just so puffed up with pride they were cocky they were <laughs> terrible and, and, and you know what happens look look what they were going to do to jesus right they get so mad when jesus reminds them of this of this truth about them jesus was reminding them about the truth about them how much they rejected the prophets right what do they do instead of humbling themselves and instead of turning to themselves and asking themselves, okay, what can I change in me to make me better? What did they do? They reacted violently. Right? They reacted violently to the point of even trying to get rid of Jesus and killing him. Throwing him out, out of their, uh, uh, um, you know, on the bro, the hill where their town was built. You know what? When you rebel against your parents, you're doing the same thing. You react violently. See? Because that's what disobedience is. That's what rebellion is. It's a violent reaction. That's why you see every disobedient kid reacts exactly the same way. With violence. Not so much that they're going to be uh, coming out with, with uh, you know, punches and things like that. It sometimes goes there. But the fact that you know, observe your behavior when you disobey. When you don't like what your parents are telling you. Observe. What do you do? Huh? You bang doors. You, <laughs> you, you throw things around. You throw a, a, a tantrum of all sorts. Well, that's the same violence that these Jews did to Jesus. Right? And that is what people do when they're so full of themselves and so proud that they cannot look into themselves and into their consciences and examine themselves and think and pray and ask help from the Holy Spirit. What is here that I can change? What is about me that I need to change for the better? See? 
That is what a humble person would do. Faced with corrections and guidance that he is receiving from the prophets that God is putting beside you. And by the way, this thing does not just affect children. <laughs> it affects anybody, including adults, including spouses. You know, you spouses right there, married people, you have each other. God, you know, you have to consider your spouse as the prophet God has put before you to help you eh? go through and navigate life together. You cannot keep rejecting what your spouses tell you because they are the prophets. School teachers or priests or ministers or pastors or whoever has some kind of moral authority over our life. We all have that. We cannot reject that. Nobody in the world is so independent of any kind of influence like that. No one. No one. We all need somebody else's guidance. We all need somebody else's counsel. We all need somebody else's moral uh, ascendancy sometimes in order to guide us through life. And if we all we do is to rebel against them, we're doomed. We can't do that. Okay? We can't do that. We will be doomed. So let's humble ourselves. This is just another application. We have been talking about pride and humility in the past commentaries. This is just one other application of it. Let's be humble. Let's be humble. Look into ourselves and really examine ourselves and ask, what, what is it that I can change? We have to have enough sincerity to change and be better persons and not reject, not reject the prophets that God puts beside us. We all have that prophet. Let's listen. Pay attention. Take heed. And do what is right. And it begins many times with obeying. Obeying. Be obedient to the prophets that God has put beside you, beside each and every one of you. Okay? And that way, that way, you won't lose your way. You will find your way to heaven, which is our ultimate goal anyway. You will find it easier to go to heaven if you just learn to be humble, learn to obey, learn to listen, and change what needs to be changed. Okay, let's go. That's it for us. Have a good day, everybody. Hope bye. to see you again tomorrow. <laughs> okay, Mia. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Eva. Are you going to say bye-bye, Eva? Huh? Eva? Okay. Bye. <laughs> she doesn't want to show herself. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Hope to see you tomorrow. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.